Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day in Delhi. There is so much to see and do here in Delhi. So in today's video, we are going to take you around for one more day of exploration in this giant city. We decided that today we're actually going to explore more of sort of our community. So we'll start the day by showing you guys our Airbnb, where we have been staying since arriving here in Delhi. We're also going to go to a cool local market nearby and then finally get to see the Lotus Temple. So this is our balcony area. It's got a laundry line, which has been really helpful, and it faces into like an alleyway. So we just like, we just come out here occasionally and just watch, just, just people watch, just see what's going on. You can see like obviously tons of people's homes on the other side. There's some construction going on next door, so we get all sorts of stuff going on here at all times of the night and day. All right, and then let's go inside. So this Airbnb is tiny. You are now in the kitchen area. There's not too much to it. We've got a couple of cupboards, one burner, which is, finicky to use, I will say. And then on the other side, we've got a sink. This is actually, it's actually purified water, which has been such a treat. This is drinking water. We use this water every single day, so we're not having to buy bottles, which is great. You can't uh, drink the water in Delhi, uh, so normally you'd have to go and like buy water bottles and things like that, but uh, this Airbnb came with a purifier, which is great, because it saves us the trip and it saves us the pollution plastic. and the plastic yeah. of buying water bottles. Yeah, and then, this is the whole rest of the apartment, really. So queen size bed. Over on this side, we've got a fridge, one table to work at, like a desk, which is great. Air conditioner, absolute must in Delhi. <laughs> and then the bedroom, I guess we'll call this. So, <laughs> okay, this. So we obviously like both work on our computers quite a lot for YouTube. And so when we got here, we asked the host, hey, could we have another like table and chairs um, so that we can both work in some way? And uh, they came with a coffee table and a lawn chair. So this is Nico's makeshift desk. He sits on the bed and he works right there. It's not, <laughs> not the best situation. He's making the most of it. You can see the coffee table is just hanging off yeah. the, <laughs> the lawn chair right now. So sometimes you just gotta make it work with what you got. Yeah. And then we've also got a nice tiny TV, but it's a smart TV. There's like Netflix and stuff on it. That's kind of nice. And then a whole wall of covers. I think the only thing left to show you is the bathroom. So first up is the shower. I'm not sure if you can see that super well. Uh, the shower head itself is really nice, but there's no shower curtain, which is really common for this area of the world. So it's just like something to get used to. Kitchen sink, mirror, we've got a toilet. And of course there's like a sprayer bum gun um, because toilet paper isn't super common here in India. I think what we're gonna do now is try to find a rickshaw that will mm -hmm. take us to the market nearby. We would usually order an Uber, but we're just gonna try and get ourselves a rickshaw yeah. and see if we can barter them down to a reasonable cost. Maybe this guy? Hello, at the Lajpat Nagar Market. Lajpat Nagar Center Market. Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, right on. 60 rupees. Okay, yeah. 60. Thank you. I don't know if you caught that or you could hear me, but I accidentally said C in response to a question. Um, so we like we spent like seven months in South America, and although it's been a little while since we left, we still continuously say like just the basic words like C and gracias. We keep using it accidentally, so not bad. Going around in like a tuk-tuk or a rickshaw like this is probably one of the best ways to get around Delhi if you're not going very far. If you are going far, you definitely want to go take the metro. Uh, driving could be a little bit intense and the traffic could be really bad. But if you don't have very far to go, then a rickshaw right in front of your house is pretty easy to find and pretty easy to take. Plus it's like very scenic. You get to see a lot of the neighborhood. And you can just smell the neighborhood, which I just love. <laughs> the traffic could be quite a shock if you've never been to India or South Asia or Asia. Asia. <laughs> <laughs> it does take a little while to get used to because it's so like chaotic and loud and busy. But it's like a sensory overload. It is. After a while, you, you start to kind of, you know, get a feel for it. Get a feel for the organized chaos. <laughs> and you get to learn to appreciate it, that it just still works. It just flows. It's it different, works. but it works. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if you caught that, but we didn't barter for that ride at all. When we asked how much it was, he said 60 rupees. And we had looked on Uber previously, and it, Uber had quoted us 75. So one of the big perks about like not being in a super touristy neighborhood is we actually get like pretty decent pricing um, instead of like super touristy pricing, which is a treat. So we just want a 60, that seems super fair to us. All right, we are here. 
Lajpatnagar Market. So not too long ago we were in the Chadni Chowk Market, which is a very, very busy market, one of the most famous ones in Delhi, probably the most famous. And we heard about also Lajpatnagar Market, which is similar, but probably not one that most tourists go to. We just happened to go to this one because it was close to our Airbnb. These markets are usually clustered into like certain sections, so you have like all the shoes in one section, all the saris in one section, all of the cameras in one section. So hopefully we'll find the food section soon because we are pretty hungry. What have you been offering? Um, rope, um, hair extensions. What did the first guy offer? Bags. Bags. <laughs> Bags. <laughs> this doesn't take long, eh? It's like immediately. Want this? Want this? Want this? I'm like, I don't think I need anything. Can you fit it in my 55 liter backpack? Oh no, 50 liter backpack. That Punjabi sweets corner looks very tempting, but we are looking for some lunch first. Maybe we'll go back there later. I think I might have found the food app. We found a big sign that says chicken biryani, so I think we're going the right way. Okay, can we get one? We found some sweet food for lunch. Don't know what it is. Going to try it anyway. Oh. What is the name? Yeah, bread pakoda. Okay, okay. That's okay. <laughs> so, he don't speak Hindi, and he doesn't speak English. So today, this mystery food is our lunch. Looks amazing. Mmm. Oh, it's spicy. Everything in India is spicy. The bread is almost like a loaf of bread, like really soft. And then the inside is like a, some sort of filling. Spicy filling. But it tastes really good. And it's 15 rupees. Really good. I really want the vegetable biryani that guy's preparing over there. Looks so good. Can I get one of these? <laughs> Spicy soup on top. Okay. Cool. All right. We have a new variety of soup and bread. Ooh. Mmm. Oh, it's very good. I might try some more amigos. Mmm. And crunchier. The bread is like more crispy. It feels like it's almost been like deep fried, whereas the one Miko was just trying is like soft, like bread. You said. So it turns out the little bed bread thing that was crushed up for my meal comes from right there. This guy's making them fresh. So we've had our appetizer and now Nicole's gonna get us some vegetable biryani. It looks like the halves or the smalls are 30 rupees each, which is really good. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm losing paneer. That's the best part. Okay, we've got veggie biryani, which is like a rice dish. Usually very spicy. I see some paneer in here. I have no idea what this is, but it's veg, so something veggie. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, that is so flavorful. The rice is like... I don't know how they make it, but it feels veggie filled. <laughs> like veggie broth filled. That is very good. The trouble sometimes when eating at a market, sometimes you don't have a place to sit down. So you're just kind of like in the middle of the alley and tons of people are walking by you. People are trying to buy stuff around you or sell you stuff. What's amazing though is the food is super delicious, very affordable, and um, looks really healthy. <laughs> I think before the food tour that we did here in Delhi, I probably wouldn't have been brave enough to like eat from the street cart vendors because um, they're just so new to me and, I, and I'm obviously worried about getting sick. Um, but honestly, we've had so many great meals here and even from these small little vendors and stuff, as long as they're busy and they like keep rotating through the food and especially if we stay towards stuff that's cooked, then usually we've, honestly, we've been pretty good and pretty safe. So fingers crossed, we, we don't get sick, but we get so many questions like on YouTube and our Instagram about like how much food and street food that we try and, and we appreciate the comments, but honestly, our suggestion is to try it. Once you kind of dive in and go for it, then like it gets less scary each time and it's totally worth the experience. It's usually delicious, delicious food and it's quite a cultural experience. What you'll find is also very common when you go around uh, these markets is there'll be a lot of people kind of begging and it's really tough to like say no, but you really kind of have to because a lot of times they uh, have been known to be like scamming you, especially scamming foreigners. Like we're evidently very foreign looking. I think Nicole uh, just uh, gives <laughs> it all away. A little. What? I think something that's really hard is that there's a lot of children out. Um, yeah. And so our suggestion would be as much as it's difficult, like don't 
give to begging children because unfortunately like, they make more money than the adults so the parents send them out and then they miss school like they don't have a life besides begging yeah. so by contributing to that it just basically keeps them out of school and keeps them on the streets um, so it's hard to say no but I think in the long run it is the right thing to do. But we heard if you do want to give back there's like way better ways to give to the locals to like give to people in poverty in India than giving like cash to mm. these people on the streets. Don't give to the kids. Yeah. Really that's the main thing. So pride, this one so pride. This one so pride. My pride, cheap pride. So like, some guy came up to us and he was trying to sell some like Apple AirPods. It like kind of looks legit, but we've also heard that like a lot of times the electronics they'll de like they'll be fake or they'll be like um, second hand or made like second hand but like made to look new. His starting price was six thousand, and we just literally just walked away and said no, and now he's already down to three thousand. That's okay. For AirPods. Thank you though. We got him down to two thousand. We didn't bargain. We just keep saying no. It's a pretty good deal. <laughs> two thousand rupees for AirPods. That's like forty dollars Canadian or something. For forty dollars, I don't think they're gonna be the real AirPods. Probably not real. So another piece of advice that we would give if you're fairly new to market shopping, especially in a place like Delhi, is that you're gonna get pestered a lot by tons of people to buy all of their things, and um, I think like you have to have a lot of patience with it. It can get a little like frustrating, but for the most part, people are really they're great. They're just like they're doing their job. They're just trying to make the day's wage, and obviously, as foreigners, you're obvious targets. <laughs> um, but like, I think for us, like it's definitely part of the experience. So our suggestion is like totally just embrace that. I know it can get a little bit exhausting after a time, um, but it's just all part of being here. So Nicole is doing some shopping. Um, she only has like one pair of like pants or like long pants that will work here in India. Because it's kind of conservative, so she's trying to get the right clothing for exploring the country. I find it overwhelming to like shop for clothing in a market. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, oh. I don't need rope. <laughs> like, I think that's the fourth person who tried to tell me to sell me rope. How much did you say again? So we've been told by friends that when you start bartering here in Delhi, you should start at like 40% of whatever the vendors start at. It feels like weird, I don't love it, just because it just feels, I don't know, bad. I was hoping to maybe get my hands on some pants, but you can't try them on. And you're saying they're 500, which is still cheap, but like, uh, chances are they're not actually going to work out for me. So I started at my bartering at 200, which just feels so cutthroat. But then he said fixed price. I don't, I, I doubt it's a fixed price. There's nothing, there's nowhere that it actually says it's 500. So I highly doubt it, but I'm just going to forever live in these green pants. So get used to them. Thank you. All right. 20 rupees is the going rate for a liter of cold water, which is amazing. Also, quick tip, always check the cap that it needs to actually crack off. Now sometimes, unfortunately, people will like reuse the bottles and just fill it with tap water and then resell it as if it's cold bottled water and you're gonna get sick. So make sure it like properly snaps when you open it up. All right, so now that we have our water, we're gonna head over to our next stop and I guess our last stop of the day, which is the Lotus Temple. It's pretty easy to get an Uber or a Tuk Tuk over to the Lotus Temple from here because we're not that far. But since the metro station is so close and the metro station in Delhi is like so, so easy, we're gonna go to the metro. And if you haven't seen our video on our first impressions of Delhi where we show you exactly how to use the metro, you should go check that out because it'll save you a ton of time on the roads. much mayhem and chaos right in front of the train station to go to the Lotus Temple. There's like all sorts of people selling stuff, people cooking up stuff. It's a little overstimulating <laughs> and that's saying something for Delhi. <laughs> So that's an example of like kids begging. We don't recommend you ever give money to them. The ones right here that are with Nicole, they're a little bit relentless. They're really following Nicole. Nicole's just ignoring them. If this happens to you, you also have to watch your wallets, especially if those kids are kind of following you for an extended period of time. Um, they can also be like pickpocketers. I guess also as sad as it may seem to be ignoring them, you can't forget that they're not working by themselves. There's likely an adult nearby that's like watching them and basically like, or orchestrating like their begging scam. Welcome to the Lotus Temple grounds. You can see behind me, maybe in the camera, I'm not too sure, you can actually see the Lotus Temple. It is named as such because it's actually like, the it's architecture makes it look like a flower. It looks like a lotus and um, with like many different petals. It's made of, I think, marble I read online. Okay, I also though see Spaceship. Who else sees Spaceship? 
That is so incredible. When I see this, I really think of India. I'm so glad we're here. All right, so we made it inside. We actually went inside the Lotus Temple. We can't take you in there, but it's very beautiful inside. It's very like geometric, and there's beautiful like, shape in the ceiling, basically, where all the petals kind of come together. It's a stunning space. And I don't think we've said yet that the Lotus Temple is a Baha'i Temple. We have never visited a Baha'i Temple before, um, and we're not super familiar with the religion. But what we do understand is that central to like the Baha'i belief is really just like unity of humankind, sort of the equity of people. Uh, regardless of things like race and class and gender. So anyway, it is a beautiful space for what seems to be a very beautiful religion. I'd like to say it's peaceful, but it's actually so busy right now that like there's a lot going on. I can imagine if it's actually quiet, it would be very peaceful here. It is, uh, I think, really neat to visit a place that um, like welcomes all people. Uh, yani Lotus Temple. Okay, that's good for us. <laughs> Alright guys, we were just enjoying the beautiful Lotus Temple and then this man came up to us and started teaching us some Hindi. So I think we got a little <laughs> yeah. bit more Hindi yeah. now, oh, right? Very small uh, one. Oh, Tikba. Tikba is Hindi. Tikba is Hindi. Tikba is Hindi. Tikba Tikba? Yeah, Tikba. Okay, we got the wrong one. I just want to say, like, I love being at the Lotus, Te Lotus Temple and mm -hmm. meeting other Indian people. Like, it's so nice. People are so, so friendly. So friendly. And, uh, you know, it's nice to collaborate on things like this mm -hmm. and show more of, like, the beautiful parts of India. And hopefully we're going to show your face to our friends back in Canada <laughs> because lots of Canadians that we've talked to have always wanted to come to India. So what do you mm -hmm. have? Do you have any advice for... Uh, for Canadians wanting yes, to see yes, India. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Indian people also love Canadian people. Yeah. Okay. Or many more Indian people in live in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, so, India, Canada, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the name of your YouTube channel for uh, all our folks? My YouTube channel is Wave for UPSC. Perfect. We'll put it down in the description as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So come to India. <laughs> people are awesome. People are super friendly. It's, it's a great place it's to visit. It's a great place. Well, that has been an amazing India-filled day. We have absolutely loved Delhi. Sadly, though, this is actually our last video in Delhi. So from here, we are catching a train to Agra. We are so excited. We're going to take you along for our very first Indian train ride oh, man. tomorrow. We're a little nervous, but I think it's going to be great. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.